Hey everybody, how's it going? If you're new here, welcome. Today we're going to be looking at the Fafine AM8 USB slash XLR microphone. This is one of their most versatile microphones. You can use it again, USB or XLR. And you do have some neat features that come with both sides of it. And also we'll talk a little bit about one of their mixers that we'll be using, but that'll be a part of another video. But do keep an eye out for that. Let's sit back, relax, and let's go ahead and hop straight into it. And here it is, the Fafine AM8 streaming microphone, good for gaming, podcasting, video creation, and voiceovers. It is USB-C and XLR. You have here on the side where it is a dynamic mic. We do have the RGB controllable, touch-sensitive mute, headphone controls, gain knob, and real-time monitoring. Which, fun fact, that real-time monitoring only works if you're using the USB mode. So if you're doing XLR, you definitely want to be using the mixer to be monitoring that. But that's another thing for a future video for the mixer. Here on the side, if you guys want to scan that and find this on Amazon, you can go ahead and do so. But let's go ahead and open it up. The specs of the microphone themselves, just so for you guys tech specs out there, we do have a dynamic corduroy microphone for the pattern. We do have the USB-C and XLR. The frequency range is 50 hertz all the way up to 16,000 hertz, 16K. We do have a sensitivity of minus 50 plus three dB. You have your maximum volume input of 120 decibels. And then you have, of course, the power for the USB is five plus 0.25 volts. So nothing too crazy when it comes to that. And then of course you do have the XLR functionality that goes with it. You do have a 16 bit depth to go with it and a 44.1 and 48 kilohertz respectively which is normal for inputting for computers and of course you have something extra special that can plug in higher unfortunately this one does not go any higher than that but still gives you great range especially for what this microphone is to be marketed for for video creation streamers once you start punching this through discord obs and youtube and whatever you're streaming through it's going to crunch that audio down and so you're really not going to see a huge difference and also, if you guys are enjoying this video so far, don't forget to go ahead and like and subscribe and leave a comment down below if you have any questions about the microphone at all. I'll be happy to answer them. And again, if you want to get notified when new videos come out with some more awesome tech like this, go ahead and ring the notification bell. And let's get back to the fun. Inside of here, we do have right on top, we have that user manual, which we will check out here in just a moment. It does look good, not too bad, but it is a roadmap, it looks like, so... We'll see what that turns into. We do have the weighted base down here at the bottom. That is basically half the weight of this microphone. And underneath the foam, we do have the USB-C to USB-A cable. Comes with a nice little customized for fine cable wrap to go with it. No go plating, but it does look good. Looks like a nice length to go with it. And then lastly, we do have the microphone itself. It does have a nice bracket for it to hold and to sit onto a boom arm, which will be fantastic. We do have the headphone monitoring knob and the mic sensitivity knob on the front of it. Or if it's going to be hanging from a boom arm, that technically would be the bottom, depending on how you have it set up. You do have the RGB button right here, which you just tap that. It's touch sensitive. You can change the colors. You can set it to a solid or rainbow. Then you have the monitoring knobs themselves, which are relatively smooth. Everything is plastic, though. Uh, so that's where you're going to be having that cost savings because this microphone only runs about 50 to 60 bucks, depending on if you can get it on sale or not. Uh, but overall, solid build quality. On the bottom here, we do have the XLR and the USB and the headphone jack for the monitoring. Again, that can only be done when it comes to using it in a USB mode. But if you're an XLR, that does not work. Then here on the other side, we do have the touch capacitive mute option that you'll be able to just tap it. It'll mute. One's red, one's green if it's on or off. So it's easy to identify there. Now we're going to go ahead and take this windscreen off so we can try to see a little bit of the microphone that's inside here. This black is really, really pigmented. It's, it's really hard to actually see through. Uh, but you can see just barely through the grates here. You can see the microphone that's in there and it kind of cones upwards. And this is a hyper-directional microphone. So when you're talking directly into the top, 
that's going to be your best sound. If you're talking it from the top, if you're talking it from the side, it's going to sound like you're 16 feet away from this thing. It is hyper, hyper directional, which is fantastic. So you don't have to worry about air conditioners, TVs, sound coming from the side or birds or cars, you know, on the other side of the wall, windows, whatever. If it's not in front of it, kind of like the microphone that I'm using right now, which is hyper directional, you're not going to hear. You could have anything going on in your room. And as long as it's not in front of the mic pointed straight at it, you should be fine. Now, secondarily, as we will look at later, I will throw this through Still Series Sonar, which has AI noise reduction as well. And that will, if there is anything that'll come through, it's gonna be so low that the AI voice detection should remove any excess. So we'll go ahead and slide that back on and make it look extra pretty yet again. You can see right here is how it should sit if it's going to be off of a boom arm. Now, of course, you can rotate the other way. So if you want the mute on top, or if you want the mute on bottom, it's kind of up to you. And then we do have the base here that you can screw this into if you want to put it in front of you on the desk. Or again, you can just screw it into the same area onto a boom arm. But the base of this thing is about half the weight, which we will check out later when we go to weigh in on the scale. But it itself, it's going to be sturdy. The microphone is not too heavy, so it's not going to tip over super easily. So definitely has some good quality base here. All right, next we're gonna go ahead and check out this user manual so you guys can see if you lose it, you guys can always come back to the video and check out the manual itself. We do have the basic instructions here for the USB-C, how to plug it in, the microphone itself for when you mute it. Here up on top, we do have the table of contents and what comes in the box, along with some more features and identifiable markers for what each function does and a nice diagram of the microphone inside the housing. Next, we have the gain knob, which shows for the sensitivity, the headphone jack and the monitoring. And we do have that wonderful RGB functionality and all of the colors plus the rainbow effects. And one thing that I really do love that Fafine does is they have such great diagrams on how to take it on, take it off, put it onto the next stand, where to plug things into, and different areas of all of the audio software inside of either Windows or Mac OS. So they do have screenshots for you, so you know exactly, no surprises, what it should look like, assuming that you're using, say, Windows 10 or the newest version of Mac OS, and how to make sure that everything is set up to where you can hear out the monitoring, how you can hear and have everything for the microphone set for your default, and everything across the board. So if you don't know necessarily what to do, just follow the user guide here and even shows you how to do some recordings and the screenshots they have there is Audacity, which is a free audio recording software. And so by the time you get done with this manual, you should absolutely have this thing fully set up and it has all the text bugs here that went over previously. Also in here, if you'd like to know that as well. But yeah, it is a roadmap. I'm not a fan of those, but I do love Fafine's illustrations and all the details they provide. I love it. Absolutely fantastic. What we will do next is we're going to go ahead and test out and hear the difference. So obviously you've been hearing me right now on my Mayano PD400X. Now we're going to go into the mic testing and we're going to hear my headset microphone. We're going to have the Mayano here that you've been hearing this entire time. And then we're going to be hearing the AM8. And then we're also going to hear the AM8 through Still Series Sonar with a little bit of tweaks done and a little bit of that AI processing to bring in a little bit of that extra fidelity, which the microphone does a fantastic job at capturing, but we're going to go ahead and check that out. All right, guys, we're going to do the microphone test here. This is the PD400X Mayano that I've been talking into on every video that you guys know and love to hear. Next, we're going to go ahead and switch over to the Nubo headset that's always on my head. We're going to go ahead and see what this guy sounds like to give us a good baseline of what a standard, you know, headset microphone sounds like before we start increasing the quality. All right. So now we have the Nubo microphone right here on the headset. Doesn't sound necessarily particularly great, but do and can hear me. You can understand me, but this is what you would expect from a headset microphone just kind of on there. Again, it works. Now we're going to switch over to the Fafine. We're going to start with the USB version and work our way up in quality. Okay, so we're going to switch over. Here we are. We're on the Fafine. This is the AM8 USB. That's what it sounds like raw, straight out of the microphone, just straight into OBS. 
So this is what you get with just plain old USB. Now we're gonna go ahead and switch over to the Still Series plus USB. Okay, now we've switched over to the Fafine AM8 with the Still Series sonar, AI stuff detection, added a little bit more to it. So this is a little bit of post-processing done with it. And so this is the sound quality you're looking to get if you fuse the AM8 with Still Series sonar. Now we're going to switch over to the PD400X just as a comparison. Okay, we're back over to the PD400X, back to the regular microphone that you know and love. Again, XLR. Uh, so you've heard this, so now back to the baseline. Now we're going to switch over to the AM8, but with the XLR function. All right, and this is the AM8 RAW with XLR. Nothing fancy done. This is just raw straight into the mixer, straight into the computer. So this is the sound quality you're looking to be getting. So next, let's go ahead and pop that through Still Series and see if we can increase that fidelity just a little bit more. Okay, and now we're on the AM8 XLR. This is going straight through with also Still Series along with it. So testing, testing. Can you hear any difference between the PD400X? I could. So this is, again, this is the best quality through XLR, through the Hafine mixer that they've also sent over, the SC3. And this is straight through with Still Series to give you the best possible quality through XLR. Now, I do need to make a note that this light here uh, is for muting, but does not work in XLR at all. It's just there because the RGB and the USB are also plugged in. But this is the sound quality you're looking to hear if you maximize everything. So if you like it, this is definitely what you should be looking to sound like. All right, so it sounds fantastic. The microphone does great. Honestly, there's a very, very, very small difference between the microphone that I have here, which is 150 to 170, which is supposed to be going up against the Shure SM7B, uh, which is a $400 microphone. And this microphone, which, yes, it is made of plastic, not metal like my current one or like that Shure one is, this is 50 to 60 bucks incredible sounding i think it it really does match the mayano here does have 10 hertz on the lower end for the mayano versus the am8 but is that 10 hertz going to be worth tripling the cost and personally i'm going to say no i bought this microphone way before if if you guys are looking to get a great streaming microphone a mic that you can use well beyond just streaming and that you have background noise or people in the house or crazy neighbors this microphone definitely would be fantastic for that being hyper directional but we do have a few more things to look at we are going to go ahead and check out the sound test so you guys can see when i say the knobs are smooth earlier in the video we're going to see just how that is so we're going to see if there's any sound that comes out of them if it's going to be high or low and we're also going to check out the weight as well so let's check it out all right, so we got standard room sound here. It's kind of equalizing here as I move. And so it's 35, 37. It's going up and down just by like two decibels as I move and tick around. Even That's even my fingers letting go of the plastic. These knobs are super smooth. Obviously, the touch sensitive is not going to have any sound whatsoever. And the touch on the back for the muting is not going to have anything at well. But we will check out the weight next. And this one's going to be without the bass first. So you guys can see what the weight is when it's on the boom arm and how much weight it'll be. So it's not going to be a whole lot. It's only 404 grams, which is not that bad. Now we're going to throw on the base and go ahead and weigh that as well, which now it goes up to 588. So, you know, I say half the weight, but it is a good chunk of the weight uh, is going to be coming in from that base. And so it will be just a little bit more, but it will have enough to keep it sturdy. Uh, but overall, I think this microphone is fantastic. I think the size of it is great. The hyper directional is unmatched at this price range. And also being a USB to XLR is also very rare to see at this price range, let alone sub $100. So honestly, this is one of my best and most suggested microphones that I could recommend. I have some other ones on the channel. I do, and those are great. If you only have 20 bucks, 30 bucks, definitely check those out. Like the Tonor, definitely a great mic for 20, 20 bucks. But if you have a little bit more to go with it, definitely look at the AM8. Being the hyper directional really sets it apart. And being XLR and USB does set it apart as well. 
Now, one thing to mention that if you are using the USB and XLR at the same time, which the USB is for the RGB, you can have that still on with XLR, but it will take priority on XLR. So you can't switch between USB and XLR. Once you unplug the XLR cable, then you can use the USB, but just gotta make note that that is a thing. Now there is something very similar to that on the mixer when it comes to the XLR versus the 3.5 millimeter endpoint onto the mixer, but we'll look at that when the that video comes out. So do stay tuned for that and keep an eye out. That's what that subscription button's for. But absolutely, link be in the description. Check it out. It does help the channel, it does help support, which I would greatly appreciate. But overall, definitely check it out. And if you have any questions, leave those in the comments down below, and I'll be happy to answer them any way that I can. And you guys have a lovely rest of your day or evening. And we'll be back with some more awesome take videos because we've got a lot more lined up, including that mixer, on the way. So you guys have a great rest of your day, and I will see you on the next one.